introduce our next speaker. He, the next, actually two speakers have been here before, so you will recognize him. This is Rocky Malloy. Rocky, last time he was here was down in Paraguay, had a great ministry down there, which has expanded. You're going to hear about it, and he's moving into the United States. So, Rocky Malloy, come on up. I think it's an honor to follow Brad. Brad's ministry has been very instrumental in what we do. How many of you are parents or grandparents? Please raise your hand. I have a question for you. Are you happy with what's happening in American schools? Are you happy with godless education, the violence? You know, the second leading cause of death right now is suicide. Just a few weeks ago, in the school district I went to in Texas, Santa Fe, there was a mass shooting. I used to date a girl in that school, you know, back in the day. Children are coming out of high school unprepared for life. Like 80% can't even manage money at any level. Not even making money. Back in the day when I was younger, it was all about, you know, the 1040 window and getting to all the unreached people groups and all that. And I was very responsive to that. My wife and I have lived overseas for 28 years. But now it's the 414 window. The largest unreached people group in the planet are children between 4 and 14, and that includes the United States. It's hard to imagine that in our country... Our children are part of the unreached people group. The summit gave a great presentation of what's happening. Well, Mission Generation brings God to school, regular school hours, campus-wide. My biggest problem is people don't believe it. Last time I was here, somebody called me out as a liar. So I'm serious. I was really embarrassed. There's no way you can do that. Yes, way you can do it. I used to have a dog, and we had an electric collar for the dog, and that dog would sneak up till the little buzzer would start ringing. This dog figured out if he would suffer just a little bit of pain, he could cross over and be free. Sometimes I think that we've allowed the devil to put a collar on us and we're terrified of a little bit of discomfort to cross over into freedom. We have way more power as the body of Christ in public school systems than most people believe. We are delivering. Last year we had 560,000 children in this program in Latin America. This year we're on track for 1.5 million, hundreds of thousands. Thousands of children are receiving Jesus Christ in public school systems. Last year, we launched in the United States, and this county, Orange County, is where the pilot programs happened. Along with Oklahoma, this year, Texas, public schools are in the system. Now look at, in 1963, I know it's a long time ago, they took prayer out of school, and like Brad said, the blue guys went all the way with it. They took God out of everything. I was speaking not a, uh, a while back in a state up north, and it's okay for certain students to bring a Koran to school, have three times of, uh, to, during the school period to pray, but Christians can't bring a Bible and they can't pray. Everything's tolerated in school now except Jesus, the Bible, and prayer. This is America. You know, I lived, in, I lived in communist countries and socialist countries. They blew up churches and killed pastors. And they pay us to deliver this program. They need it. All right, I can't get into it. I got nine minutes. Okay, that was, I did this in Dallas and they got me, I got bad scores because you didn't tell us how it works. I don't have time to tell you how it works. I'll just tell you this. It's pre-conversion discipleship. That's what Jesus did. He's told stories to nudge people over to the truth so they could be enlightened. School systems now are alien cultures to the gospel. If you went in there with the Bible, they wouldn't even know what you were talking about. This is more effective because we tell stories and bring children to the gospel of Christ Jesus. We use the same system C.S. Lewis developed. It's called the Oxford Method. 
He called it working behind enemy lines. Same process they did. Now my wife is the editor-in-chief of it. She's going to just mention this briefly, how it works. Go ahead, sweetheart. God gave a dynamic plan in the first two chapters of Genesis before man fell into sin. There's a void in school, and that void needs to be filled. It can't be filled with mentioning God, talking about Jesus, or reading the Bible. But it can be filled with truth. And truth is Jesus entering into the school. So we teach seven principles out of the first two chapters of Genesis. Love, the decision to give the best we have for the well-being of other people. Creation, to speak the invisible realm of thought into the tangible realm. A chair, a wooden chair, didn't just start in the woods or in a tree. It started in the mind of man. And by the spoken word, it became. And we talked that in the schools. Creation, we teach it. We don't talk about God. We talk about the principle. Purpose. Purpose always exists before design. That means my destiny, my reason for existence, first was before I ever had a design. Powerful. There's no accidents among us. Work is what we do to fulfill our purpose. It's how we share ourselves with those around, with the world around us. Productivity is the result because we're fruitful. We bring results to the table. Governance, leadership, that's where we fall into. Once we know we exist for a reason, because love is in us and it drives us, and there's something we have to share, we become fruitful. We become powerful and leaders sharing it, and we learn perfection in family. That's how our system works, and it's built on five um, pillars of society. Who am I? How do I take care of myself? How do I work with other people? How do I take care of my uh, natural environment? And how do I use the resources God has given me to multiply myself? We teach that in school, and it's having a great success. That's my Dutch piece of cake right there. You know, you can imagine the testimonies that we get. I mean, literally hundreds of them. And because we work with government, it's like certified. I know there's a lot of sometimes extrapolation. Because we work with government, it's, it's all certified. It's cert I mean, volumes of information. This is just one guy. You know, he was kind of like the, the leader in school. He was the cool guy. He blew it all off. He said, no, nah, that's not for me girls and drugs and whatever. He was having an overdose. He was dying. He couldn't breathe. And his, what he thought his dying breath was, he's calling it out to Jesus because that's what he heard in school. He survived it, man. Now he is an evangelist for Jesus. Schools turn into churches. Social impact. According to our data, 83% conversion rate in public schools. Graduation's up 45%, dropouts down by 30 Teen, teen pregnancies down by 80 per, Jesus is still working. That's what happened when God shows up in school. You know, when they took prayer out of school, every social marker started going down. Now when Jesus is in there, it starts going back up. Governments like us because of the economics of children behaving themselves. So here we are. I love the time, talent, treasure thing from the Barnabas group. When I first got started, this is years ago, Jim let me come up here when we were just a tiny little, just him vetting me was one of the biggest training moments of my life. So I'm so excited now after like seven years later, we're reaching, you know, this year, 1.5 million children. Fill in the form. All I need is your email address. You know what? I quit asking for money a long time ago. We just give you the news, let you be led of the Lord. If you would fill that form in, just give me your email address and your name. I would love to keep you with some awesome news, and we need help coming into more schools in this county. That's my time. Change the world in nine minutes. Let's pray for Rocky and Mission Generation. Lord, thank you for the heart that you've given Rocky. Um, he's got an incredible, incredible testimony of where he came from and how you've changed him and uh, used him and impacted millions of people, Lord, because he had the 
courage to follow you. Uh, bless he and his wife, and uh, Lord, we pray that if there's ways that we can bring our time, our talent, our network around them to help them uh, further reach more kids who would come to know you, that their lives might be changed so that those statistics would go in the right direction, that you would show us how that might happen. So we just lift that up to you, and we just pray that in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a second and fill out uh, Mission Generations feedback form, if you would. We would appreciate that, and so would Rocky. And that's page 43 in your handout.